Hey, welcome back. In earlier lessons, we already shaped a little bit of the picture what you need to do, how to create your own uh, controller within your own uh, plugin. But it's maybe nice to know also what kind of uh, common tasks there are to pick up. And of course, well, one of them is going to be to render a page. But what other tasks are there to actually complete within your own uh, controller? Now, we're actually not going to talk about controllers in general. I'm, I'm really focused upon the storefront, um, specifically, therefore, also controllers that are uh, extending upon this other thing called the storefront controller. Um, and, and therefore, it's also leading to non-API specific uh, tasks. So let's uh, first start with an overview, um, just to set uh, the, 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 the conversation. Um, we have a couple of things that we could do, like rendering a page, and I'm going to explain this in, in more depth in the upcoming slides. Uh, we could redirect to another page, another route. Uh, we could forward to another route. And so apparently there's this, this difference between redirecting and forwarding. I'm going to explain the, the bits there. Uh, we could obviously just output data, for instance, uh, JSON data. And last but not least, we could also just uh, throw uh, an error, uh, for instance, a 404 not found uh, error. So these uh, five scenarios are, are something I'm going to zoom in in a more uh, elaborate way. So first of all, uh, rendering a page. Um, please note that there's actually another lesson focused purely on this example, uh, where we also bring in the Twig template and a couple of other things. Um, so if you, if you really want to know everything about rendering the page, uh, do make sure to uh, follow that lesson uh, as well. Uh, in, in this case, I'm, I'm purely just pointing out that one of the controller tasks could be to render a page. It starts slowly with the definition of the class itself. Um, the controller class is extending upon the storefront controller, which purely makes it also, uh, well, something for the storefront, obviously. Therefore, the route scope is also set. Uh, the route scope is pointing to a scope called storefront. And then this is actually one of the reasons also why um, often the route scope is not defined on a per method basis, but the route scope is defined on a per class basis. So you can see that it's uh, now part, just above the class definition. And why? Well, because the route scope called storefront um, really requires you to uh, extend upon that storefront controller. Well, that's put in a little bit of wrong way. Uh, there's a lot of times this benefit of uh, extending from this uh, storefront controller. However, as soon as we deal with things like the store API, uh, the scope would be different, but then we would also be extending uh, yet upon another class. Um, and that other class is most frequently an abstract controller, which is actually also the parent of this storefront controller. Anyway, so we got a class. It's uh, defined for the storefront uh, scope. Uh, it's extending upon the storefront controller. And then on top of it, I'm actually extending or I'm inserting this uh, generic page loader. Um, and I'm going to comment on that page loader in a, in a moment. Because actually the next uh, page is now explaining um, the method that is actually doing the work. Uh, it's marked as uh, route by using this add route definition. Um, within the, the example method, I'm also injecting uh, the current request, the sales channel context. And, and often I'm, I'm a little bit put off by the variable name of this uh, sales channel context. Um, there's another lesson upon uh, the differentiation between the more generic context and then specifically the sales channel context. And the sales channel context is actually wrapping that generic uh, context uh, itself, not, not extending it, but actually there's an injection of this generic context within the sales channel context. And therefore maybe, I personally tend to name that variable also dollar sales channel context instead of dollar context. However, in, in the core, you often see this as dollar context. So that's what I'm sticking with uh, at this moment. Now, rendering uh, a page, uh, which is the goal of this little example, is, is nothing more than just calling upon that parent method called render storefront. And, and we're extending upon the storefront controller. We're, we're not building a store API controller. And therefore, I, I have a couple of those methods that come in handy, render storefront. Uh, the first argument being a twig template. The second argument being a list of uh, parameters that you can push into twig. Um, and th that could be it, basically. Um, so the, the only line that is kind of like a, a hard requirement in, in this scenario is actually to do that return of uh, the output of render storefront. However, I'm, I'm also adding in something else. 
um, I'm here adding in this uh, thing called page. And that's not a mandatory thing, um, but consider it a handy thing. So as soon as you're putting uh, together your own uh, Twig templates, um, you might have the necessity to refer to other parts in the page or to, to um, uh, set something in footer, to set something in header. And that's basically what that page uh, object is for. Um, it, it's not a requirement, but it's just a little handy tool with um, uh, setters and getters so that you can easily get your hands upon uh, other parts of the page that, that might be relevant. And in this case, I'm actually uh, inserting my own uh, generic page loader, which is just shipped with the core. But actually, if you review uh, the code of, of uh, uh, Symfony or uh, uh, Shopper core bundles, then often you'll see that um, uh, in a specific uh, confinement like the product page or uh, the category page or the checkout, um, the generic page is actually um, extended upon with yet another class, um, not because it needs to, but simply because then there's multiple more uh, um, uh, as, well, handy little methods available um, for that specific scenario. So for instance, uh, there's a generic page loader, but there's also a product page loader. And that product page loader simply just extends upon that generic page loader to add even more utilities to it. Um, personally, I consider it um, a choice. Um, so either you, you find it handy to pass on that page onto the Twig template or you don't. Um, and if you don't, well, then you bump into other issues maybe or you don't. Um, but if you, if you do bump into specific issues like setting the header or setting the footer from within your own uh, uh, Twig template, um, then it might come in handy to actually use that uh, page loader. And the page loader is actually referring to yet another thing called a page, obviously. Uh, so that's the, 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 the object that we see right here, dollar page. And there's actually going to be another lesson upon how to create your own page loader and how to put this uh, all into a little bit more customization. But enough talking, I think like the, the, the straight forward example here is we can render a page simply by just calling upon render storefront, um, that, that method that we inherit from the parent. Um, and then there's a lesson also uh, separately from this one, um, specifically focused upon rendering a page. So there's a couple of more details um, in that lesson as well. So let's move on. Another thing that we can do from within our own uh, controller is uh, to redirect yet to another route. Um, now, uh, n note the, the, the wording. We're not redirecting to another page. Well, actually, that's the, the, the whole uh, goal. That's the whole purpose. Um, but instead, actually, we're, we're phrasing this um, to state that we're actually referring to another route. Um, which is also um, uh, caused by, well, that, the, that parameter that we add uh, in here. Um, so in the end, there's a URL called slash account slash login. However, that slash account slash login URL is actually built with, well, another controller class. That controller class has the right uh, PHP annotations like at route scope, at route. And actually within that at route, um, there's the name uh, referring to, well, this, uh, this name, frontend.account.login.page. So maybe slide back, just like I, I'm coming up with my own name here, frontend.example, um, I can just refer to the names of other routes or other controllers um, just to redirect uh, to them. And, and all of the, the HTTP headers and et cetera are just taken care of by, um, by um, uh, the shopper core. Now, apart from redirecting to another page, there's also this other mechanism, which is forwarding to another uh, page. And actually, this requires you to have a, a deeper understanding of what routing actually is uh, within the, the shopware architecture or, or actually more literally the, the, the Symfony architecture. Um, internally, we've got all of these different controller classes, aka routes, and all of them, they are uh, meant for a specific uh, task. Uh, so that's what we do with this uh, at route annotation. Uh, but there's an overall mechanism, apparently, that is uh, scanning for all of those different routes. Um, and, and let's refer to that as the router. Um, it's a little bit more complicated uh, than that. Um, but just to keep it simple, um, there's a loop um, happening somewhere in this routing uh, mechanism, choosing basically which uh, route needs to be picked up upon uh, by, by using, well, what kind of uh, mechanism. And this default routing uh, simply also allows us to move forth and back between uh, in, in this loop, kind of. Um, so what we can do is we can just determine that we want to have um, an, another route to be parsed, um, which basically resets the whole loop. 
Um, and in this case, I'm just uh, referring to the frontend.account.login page, which is again um, actually uh, equaling the URL slash account slash login. But in this case, I'm not doing a browser redirect. I'm not forcing the browser to go to that new page, but I'm actually doing an internal redirect. So the URL would be remaining the same. Um, and that would be simply my example URL, while internally the root information is just uh, changed. Um, it's, it's not uh, used that often, um, and most of the time we're dealing with, well, either rendering a page or just uh, redirecting to another page, um, but in, in certain situations this comes, uh, comes in handy. So there's two more uh, scenarios that I want to point out. Um, outputting JSON. Uh, again, this is actually explained in another lesson where we also pick up on that router uh, task or that controller task to actually do something with this uh, JSON response. Uh, so more frequently, this, this kind of like is useful um, if you're building your own uh, AJAX uh, mechanism, uh, which is, well, the J stands for J JavaScript. So obviously uh, we need to do something with Twig templating, but we also need to do something with JavaScript. So that's, that's actually explained in another tutorial. But, but from the perspective of that method within your own uh, controller, it's kind of simple. The only thing that you need to do is just to return the right uh, JSON response. Another s simple scenario is kind of uh, throwing a, a 404, uh, which boils down basically that within your own uh, controller task, uh, within your own method, you simply just throw an exception. Now that exception might just bubble up and, and cause actually another error page. And, and just to make sure that actually uh, Shopware is picking up on the right uh, task, on the, on the right exception, uh, we can also just throw uh, an exception of the type Shopware HTTP Foundation. And within that exception class, we are supposed to set a specific uh, response code. Uh, so in this case, it would be 404 um, or a 500 error or well, whatever you would like uh, to prefer, um, plus an additional message. Um, the only downside is that this Shopware HTTP exception class is abstract. So we can't just inject it directly. We can't use it. Uh, no, we, we actually need to create our own new exception class extend upon that uh, existing class, implement all of the methods, and that's leading into um, that we can then throw our new uh, class, in this case, example not found exception, um, as we see fit. Again, there's another lesson actually focused upon this because it requires just a couple of additional uh, steps. Um, but, but in principle, it's kind of simple. If you want to um, cause a 404 error, you just need to make sure that the right class is there. And again, you're throwing that exception and, and then you're done. Um, and then again, uh, it's hooking into a deeper mechanism, uh, a more complex overall mechanism of routing within the Symfony framework. Uh, but that's for another time to uh, explain. Um, in, in this lesson, I, I really try to focus upon like the, the inspiration. What could you do with uh, a router or, or with a controller and, and do specifically a, a task like rendering a page or redirecting, forwarding, um, outputting some, uh, some data. And obviously, there's still other things to do as well. So uh, alongside outputting JSON data, uh, maybe I want to output a PDF document or um, I want to throw specific errors um, under a specific circumstance. Um, but I, I think like in general, this sums it up. Um, and, and of course, we can just dive deeper into it. But I think this is just essential for to get you started with building your own plugin uh, with 99% of all of the tasks uh, that you would like to, uh, to do. So that's it uh, for now. Hope you uh, enjoyed it. Um, hope it gives you um, a little bit of inspiration. And I hope to see you back in another lesson uh, as well. See you.